Hello and welcome to the YouTube channel of mprugs.com. My name is Mike. I'm the moderator in the series of videos that is all about handmade carpets from around the world. Welcome you to our channel. I hope you and your family are doing well. In today's episode, I'm going to feature two beautiful replica Persian rugs. These are handmade Persian rugs that are obvious replicas of famous paintings. We have a Tabriz rug here that is Leonardo da Vinci's Last Supper. It is probably one of the most oftentimes replicated Persian rugs when you have when you look at the picture and everything but there's few features that I thought I'd point out to you because we do have a lot of Persian rug fans that are members of our YouTube channel and um, that have subscribed. I also have a lot of clients who genuinely love especially pictorial whether it is Persian rugs like in this case or here we have a very rare old Herike Aussie pack. This one is the tur um, turtoise teacher. I call it the turtle teacher, but um, apparently um, it's a beautiful story behind this carpet. It is also a replica of a famous painting by a famous Turkish artist by Osman Hamdi Bay. And I so hope I didn't screw this up. He created a beautiful painting that also has a very deep meaning back in around 1906. And so this Herike is an actual replica of the painting. But what I wanted to do was I wanted to showcase not only these two carpets, but also give you a, a few pointers. Because one of the questions that I oftentimes get when it comes to pictorial rugs is when it comes to the high-end pictorial rugs, most of them, they tend to be either the Tabriz, sometimes the Herike, and then you also have the Gom rugs. But the question that I oftentimes get is, for example, why are there not a whole lot of specially colorful pictorials in the Isfahan rugs? or in the Nain rugs, Kashans, and some of the other popular types of Persian rugs. And there's actually a very good reason for it. But I thought I'd introduce you, showcase a couple of examples, and also give you a few things that, for those of you that are into Persian rugs, you, you may see this and you say, okay, now I know what to look for when I look at um, pictorial rugs, especially pieces that are replicas of famous paintings or statues. Any type of, anytime you have a rug that is basically a copy of something, you will look, look for a few things. And just to give you an example here, um, if you look at The Last Supper, um, one of the things that I notice is we have a lot of them. If you go to our website at mprugs.com, you're going to find several of these. We have Chinese versions of this. We have Turkish. We have several Tabriz rugs. And they typically, um, this is probably actually on the large side of it. We have, uh, this is roughly three foot by five foot, one meter by one and a half meter. It's typically about as large as they come. We have seen a couple that are larger, but it's extremely rare. But in almost all instances, the weavers, the workshops, they did a few things that are actually, um, it, it's different than what you have in the original painting. So, um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna step aside there's the original painting, Michelangelo, approximately 1495. Um, I'm sorry, did I? I meant Leonardo da Vinci. Um, about 1495 created the painting. It's in Italy. Then here we have the replica. 
And you will find that, for example, when you look at the Last Supper pieces that I have on my website at the time this video was taken, I think there is about four or five of them. These are all individually handmade. But in virtually every single one of them, you will notice there's a few subtle changes. For example, if you look at the painting and if you look at the rug, you will notice instantly that the ceiling, the backgrounds have different colors and sometimes even different designs. Take a look at the Tabriso. You see the tile pattern? If you look at the painting, now that's, the ori that's a picture of the original painting. There is no tile pattern at the bottom. Now, it could be that over the centuries, being that this is a huge, I mean, this is a piece of art that has been basically subject to the elements for centuries, maybe 500 years ago, they may have been tile patterns, but definitely nothing like it. Also, um, take a look at Apostle, F and I believe it's Philip. I'm, I could be wrong here. But you notice how the brother is a blonde in the painting, and he is not exactly a blonde anymore. And the clothing, different color. These are the subtle changes, and you will find that when you look at different pieces, you're almost always going to find that there is subtle changes. Some of the pieces, for example, will have a solid table. The cloth is a solid. In this particular case, you have all silk indentations, so all this light area, it's all silk. Um, Every one of these pieces has a different weave out of everything. But I thought I'd point it out. This is classic of what they do with the Persian rugs, with the Tabriz weavers, when they make pictorial pieces. Now, over here we have one of my own personal favorites. Um, well, at least since I've gotten it. Um, this is something that I have a lot of collectors of Turkish, the Herake rugs. This is an old Aussie pack, which for those of you that are into the Turkish rugs, you know about the Aussie pack. These, um, here's a piece that we're guesstimating. It's about 50 years old. It's a really, really nice piece. And back in the old days, these pieces were purchased as collectibles. Very, very fine piece. This one has a 1313 quality, which comes out to be right about, that's 13 knots per centimeter, or approximately 1,000 knots per square inch. Here you have a very, the Last Supper is a high-end Tabriz rug, silk foundation, 400 knots. Here you have pure silk, 1,000 knots. Both of them are made with a Turkish knot, and I'll e explain to you in a minute why that also matters when it comes to making pictorials. But the tortoise teacher was a famous painting by this Turkish artist, Osman Hamdi Bay. He did it around 1906. There is the original. Here is the Ozipek version of it. It depicts um, the Ottoman Empire was basically coming to an end right about 1950, 1920, the end of World War I and everything. And this painting depicts him, the, paint, uh, the artist himself. This is Osman dressed as... Um, as, an, as a teacher, as an intellect, and he is trying to convince, he's trying to coach the tortoise, the turtles, by song and apparently also with a little whack of his stick. He's trying to get them to understand that there are changes coming and that 
they need to adjust to the changes of what's happening at the time. Otherwise, they're going to be left behind. And this painting has a very apparent deep meaning. I mean, when you look at it and everything, like I said, for those that are here, you have the original art and then you have a hands, painstakingly handmade rug. But the story behind the painting is absolutely, I think it's amazing. And like I said, being that this was done at towards the beginning of the demise of the Ottoman, the monarchy. And here you have, like I said, he's trying to basically convince the tortoise that they need to change. And this is something that if you want to read the story behind it, um, like I said, um, I googled it, The Tortoise Teacher by Osman Hamdi Bai, and um, it was absolutely beautiful to read the story. But um, the reason why a lot of the pictorial pieces um, are made by Tabriz or by, in this case, the Herakeh, and then you also have the Gom rugs, is because of the, cho the availability of colors. If you look at this Tabriz rug, or if you look at the Herake rug, or if you look at the pure silk Gom rugs, you will find that they have an abundance of colors to choose from. That's one. You don't find that variety of colors in some, a lot of the other types of Persian rugs. So if, for example, somebody were to want to weave an Isfahan rug or a Nain rug, creating the dyes would be a very painstaking, very expensive process. Because in Tabriz rugs, it's common. The weavers, the workshops, they can talk to the, the wool manufacturers basically and say, look, we need this amount of green. Whereas in the Nain rugs, they're going to look at this and say, okay, you know what, this is not something that we make. So if you want this mint greenish, we're going to have to custom make you a batch. And um, when we make, when we dye the wool and when we do all that, well, that's going to obviously increase cost. And because certain types of rugs are not known for certain colors, it's generally speaking, it's not something that you would typically find. So the chances of you finding an Isfahan rug, Mashat, uh, Keshan, Nain, with, in, like I said, with the Last Supper design, slim to none. At least I've never seen one. That's one of the things. There's also a couple of other things. But before I go on, I just want to briefly point out to you. Um, I got a lot of folks who enjoy the channel, they like to learn about Persian rugs, and who also have questions about rugs that they themselves own. So if you're one of those folks, I make myself available to my viewers. Like I said, this is a hobby for us. Um, there is a link below in the description. It's to a video where I show you what kind of pictures I need. The right size and you know, what type of pictures of a rug, what areas of the rug, you can email them to me and I can give you a quick answer. This way, uh, it makes the channel a little bit more informative. I also like to make myself available to you. Like I said, this is our hobby and passion. And so if there is something that I can help you with, feel free, just email me. Watch the video below on how to, which pictures I need and the format and everything, and I'll get back to you on that. Also, obviously, if you want to support our channel by subscribing to it, or if you want to be updated um, when new videos come out, like I said, hit that subscribe button. This way you get updated. I normally do about a video about every week or two weeks or so, as I have time to do it. So, but to get back, we wanted to um, 
point out to you the dyes matter. The other thing is the type of knots. There are certain, there is basically the two types of knots that are used to make Persian rugs. Um, and whether we, when I say Persian rugs, I'm referring to generally high-end handmade rugs, whether it's made in Iran, made in Turkey. I always know I get a whole bunch of people who always say, oh my God, he called the Turkish rugs Persian rugs. Well, you know what? To me, we're all one big family. We're all brothers, sisters. That's me. So, but you generally speaking have the Turkish knot. This is what is used in the Tabriz rugs, the Herakay rugs, and some of the other types of Persian rugs. It's there are known as it's a double knot, it's a Turkish knot, and then there is what is known as a single knot or a Persian knot. For pictorial pieces, we have learned the double knot allows not only a greater amount of detailing, but it also allows shading that you typically don't be, um, get. When you look at it close, for example, I featured this Last Supper rug, you will notice that in the silk, there's indentation. They literally carved the silk. Um, it's inside the rug. It's hard to see until you literally run your hand over it, but it's like indentations. This is something that you typically are able to produce better with the Turkish, the double knot, than you can with the single knot, the Persian rug, with the Persian knot. And that's one of the things that sets apart the rugs and everything. So when I, whenever I talk about the pictorials, I always say, you know, most of them, you got Tabriz, Nain, and Gold. But there is a reason for it. The dyes is one, the wool and the way they're knotted, that's the other. But um, like I said, I wanted to feature this video to answer some of the questions I've been getting. Also, sometimes when we get unusual rugs, like for example, in this case, the tortoise teacher. Here's an old classic, beautiful. This is a small piece. I mean, this is almost like a painting. This is what was purchased back then, and they're very expensive back then. Um, thankfully, not so much. The prices have crashed in the 90s, and they have basically become affordable. The original buyer could have, they spent a fortune. Um, we're talking Rolex type of deal. Um, thankfully, things have calmed down a little bit, but I wanted to showcase a beautiful rendition of a famous painting, but also show you the Last Supper one and show you point, literally point out some of the differences. So I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, feel free to let us know if you have any questions. If you want to see pictures and all that, we got links below and you can also visit us at mprugs.com. Again, if you have questions, information is in the description. Feel free to subscribe. I'm going to be coming back to you with many more videos to come about the beautiful world of handmade carpets. Until then, I wish you and your family the very best. We'll see each other again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.